it was really cool to see the cyber cab, how that fits together. So the unbox process, I was glad to hear a little more about master plan part four, because I did think it was a bit vague what Tesla covered when they talked about master plan part four originally, Elon gave us a little more meat on the bone. And he talked about the chip making factory and maybe Tesla will have their own chip making factory. I thought that was a really big deal. Let me pause there for a second. I've got some PTSD with exciting new projects, new business lines. We've gone through this with 4680. We've gone through this with a lot of Elon promises. It did shock me that Elon went to the chip makers like, Hey, we want more chips. Give us as many chips as you can. We'll even pay you for any more chips you can make beyond our agreement. And they're not getting more than they're asking for, even though incrementally it'd be very profitable for them to make them. So like they're seeing constraints as far as the chip makers. Yeah. Total flashback to the original Gigafactory days. We're going to need a lot more batteries <laughs> and everyone's like, well, that's the world supply of batteries. You can't do that. And he's, I'll do it anyways. And just built the Nevada Gigafactory. If you go back to what they were saying that factory would do by some estimations, it hasn't lived up to the original promise back in 2014. The ambition is there. I'm just jaded is too strong of a word, but I, I I'll say I'm cautiously optimistic on what happens here. I just don't want to give them full credit for having perfect manufacturing lines for these up and running and meeting all their chip demands internally. I think it's yeah. good that they're doing it, but I suspect it's going to be some combination where they'll still buy from the Samsungs and the CSMCs of the world, but hopefully mm -hmm. they can get a decent yield out of their own factory as well. Yeah. I think Jeff Lutz was one of the first people to think about this after we all got talking more about Optimus as a community, you're going to run into limits when you go from like a hundred thousand to a million Optimus, and then try to go beyond a million Optimus per year. You need a million more chips per year. <laughs> I'm curious to see how it turns out. And I understand how you feel snake bitten by 4680 and some other things and are a little bit anxious about it. Elon has ambitions to increase production by 50% next year, as far as number of vehicles produced. So from roughly 2 million to 3 million is a major undertaking. That's also a million more chips, but a lot yeah. of batteries. Yeah. <laughs> getting back on track now, back in 2020, there was the whole, we're going to have 50% growth in volumes for a decade, which got to 20 million by 2030. That number has been strangely absent these last several years, but it's nice to hear the ambitions for meaningful volume growth in vehicles. It probably sounds too aggressive to people who are FSD skeptics. But I'm thinking about just how good V14 is and it still has some polish needed. So I don't mm -hmm. want to be overly bullish without cause, yeah. but I'm very confident they're going to get that sorted. And I think Elon's time frame of two months to get you to FSD unsupervised in your car, that's probably overly bullish. But if it takes yeah. four months, five months, okay, like April of next year, you can text and drive or watch Netflix. That's going to sell a lot of, of Tesla cars and that's going to mm -hmm. sell a lot of FSD subscriptions. I think ramping up in anticipation of that is really smart. And I do think we're in the ramp up part of the S curve again for Tesla's deliveries and for their earnings power. Yeah, I agree. I believe the rough edges around V14 will buff out. Looking forward to that. I want to talk a little bit about pay package. I did see some signs coming out of the meeting. People were talking about Elon's $1 trillion pay package. True, the value does accrue and you hit all these hurdles. It'll be very hard to do all the hurdles. But if both RoboTaxi and Optimus are successful, it'll happen. Yep. You'll have $7 trillion of value created. And people are focused on how much tax Elon will pay. It could be... $400 billion in tax that he'll pay. But then that, for reference, I was looking up how much we've taken in, in tariffs since Trump took office and it was something like two or 300 billion. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about more federal, and this is just from Elon. It's not to mention the other many Tesla shareholders who are going to have gains on their shares too. One individual paying <laughs> more in income tax than the entire tariffs that are causing an impact to GDP growth potentially. Yeah. It's like, this is a very big deal. I was thinking about the value that accrues to the shareholders and how much tax would be paid on that. The top 
10% of Americans own 70% of the wealth. What that means is that the capital gains from Tesla held in brokerage accounts, people will say, I'm never going to sell, but people will sell eventually. Withdrawals that come out of IRAs are going to be at those high tax brackets. So uh, on capital gains, the high rate there is around 24%. On IRAs, it's likely going to be like 32% or 39.6%. Again, we're talking about the top 10% of Americans who are going to be in high incremental tax rates. So the Elon's getting $1 trillion, but I did some napkin math, and $2 trillion in taxes will likely be paid Jeez. if Elon gets that $1 trillion. If all that value accrues just by everybody. Elon maybe pays 400 billion, other taxpayers pay 1.6 trillion dollars. Yeah, this is the thing that drives me so crazy about seeing all these posts of, oh, look, nobody deserves a trillion dollars. Or there was some like college debate and the, one of the questions was like, should billionaire or should, it was, it was either billionaires or trillionaire. I think it was, I think it was should billionaires, billionaires be should, allowed in the US. Should they exist? Just like uh, in general, no. So what's implied by that question? Do we kill them or do we just confiscate all their wealth above 999 million? It's so crazy to me. I think we can have nuanced conversations about income inequality. I think that is an important topic. But if you're just like, like this is morally wrong for somebody to have that much wealth, not taking into consideration what they might do with that. Elon's not buying yachts. He's literally trying to seed the Mars colony but yeah. nobody goes into that level of detail. But if you're this mindset that this is just an affront to humanity, I think you are living in this zero sum game where like, if he's got that much, it means he's taken from somebody else when the exact opposite is true. If he's made that much, that means there's been a multiple more that he's created for so many normal people. You and I, in our day job, are just seeing that all the time. People whose lives have been changed by the hard work of Elon and the rest of the Tesla team. I get a little angry when I see these stupid takes. Oh, this is immoral. And Elon hired a bunch of rocket scientists and then he's taking all the credit. It's, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. you guys have no idea. Yeah, he's created a lot of wealth and a lot of jobs. 140,000 jobs globally would not exist without Tesla. And there's all the jobs at suppliers and people that feed those employees and cut their hair, or educate their kids and all the, all these other jobs. So there's, I think there's three to one jobs ratio for jobs that are created. So you're looking at over a half million people that would be out of work if it weren't for Elon Musk, which is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs>